Your doctor has recommended a procedure, laparoscopic radical prostatectomy to treat your prostate cancer. Before we talk about the procedure, let's review some information about the prostate and your medical condition. The prostate is located under the bladder and behind the penis. It is a walnut-sized gland that is part of the male reproductive system. It helps make semen. The urethra is a tube that carries both urine and semen to the penis. It passes through the prostate which surrounds it like a donut. Prostate cancer is the second most common cancer in men. It usually occurs in men age 50 and older and those men that have a family history, especially a father or brother with prostate cancer. But the highest risk is for men that are African American and over age 70. The treatment of your cancer will depend on many factors including the size, spread and type of cancer, your age and health. The options that you may have considered are watch and wait, medication including hormones, radiation therapy, and or surgery. It is very important that you understand why this surgery has been recommended for you. If you have questions, ask. Radical prostatectomy is surgery to remove the whole prostate gland, some nearby tissue, and lymph nodes. Everything removed is tested to be sure the cancer has not spread. This surgery is only used as a treatment if the prostate cancer is still in the prostate. If the cancer has already spread, then surgery does not help and can cause serious problems when other treatments are used. In fact, if during surgery the surgeon finds that the cancer has already spread and is outside of the prostate, the procedure is stopped and other more effective treatments for the situation are planned. Your surgeon has recommended a laparoscopic surgical procedure. A long instrument with a light and camera, called a laparoscope, is used. The scope makes it possible for your surgeon to see and operate on hard-to-reach delicate tissue. This is minimally invasive surgery that uses very small incisions instead of a classic large incision. Healing and return to normal activity is usually faster with less bleeding and fewer complications. With all laparoscopic procedures, the surgical team is prepared to change your surgery to an open procedure with a larger incision if this becomes necessary. An open procedure is sometimes needed to treat unexpected bleeding or other findings during a procedure that make it impossible to do using a laparoscope. If this happens, your stay in the hospital and recovery will be longer than you originally expected. Be sure you understand why a laparoscopy has been recommended for you. Now let's talk a little more about what happens during a laparoscopic radical prostatectomy. General anesthesia and medications to make you asleep and pain-free during your procedure are given. A tiny incision is made and your abdomen is filled with CO2, carbon dioxide gas. Other small incisions are made as needed for the surgeon to place tools that are used to cut, stitch, move, and remove tissue for the procedure. The bladder is gently separated from the prostate. The connection of the prostate to the bladder is cut. And then the connection to the urethra. The surgeon is careful to protect the nerves necessary for you to control your erections and urination. However, damage to the nerves may be necessary or unavoidable in removing your prostate. The prostate is carefully placed in a bag and removed through a small incision. This way no cancer cells are spread. Finally, the bladder is stitched back to the urethra. The surgical area is carefully inspected for bleeding and a surgical drain is placed.
The instruments and gas are removed. The incisions are closed. After surgery, speak up and tell someone on your care team if you have unexpected pain, dizziness, or trouble breathing. You will have some discomfort, but medication should help if you have pain. Your risk of complication from this surgery is most related to your health before surgery, the size and nature of your cancer, and the experience of your surgeon. Prostate cancer typically affects older men with other medical problems. Your team will watch for early rare complications such as stroke, heart attack, blood clot, and internal bleeding. Most patients stay in the hospital for one to three nights after surgery. The drain is often removed before you are sent home. The Foley will stay in place for about one to three weeks. Incontinence, leaking urine, is a known side effect of prostatectomy. It is normal to have after your Foley is removed. You will need to wear a pad to stay dry. Control of urine improves quickly over the following days, weeks, and months. By six months, 20% or one in five men still have some urine leakage, and 5% or five in 100 men have severe leakage. Another side effect of this surgery is erectile dysfunction, or ED. All men will have trouble with their erections after prostate removal. Half of men, 50%, will eventually be able to have an erection, but most will continue to have some permanent changes. Time, exercise, medication, and surgery can help. Call your doctor if you cannot urinate, have a fever, redness, or pus from your incision, worsening pain, or bright red bleeding that doesn't stop. Be patient as you heal. Communicate your concerns with your surgeon. If you do have long-term side effects from your procedure, you can see improvement with time, further healing, medication, exercise, or more surgery. To avoid cancellation or complications from anesthesia or your procedure, your job as the patient is to not eat or drink anything after midnight the night before surgery, not even a stick of gum. Take only medications you were told to on the morning of surgery with a sip of water. Ask when to stop your aspirin or blood thinners before surgery. Arrive on time. You should be ready to verify or confirm your list of medical problems and surgeries, all of your medications, including vitamins and supplements, current smoking, alcohol, and drug use, and all allergies, especially to medications, latex, and tape. All surgery and anesthesia have a small but possible risk of serious injury, even some problems very rarely leading to death. It is your job to speak up and ask your surgeon if you still have questions about why this surgery is being recommended for you, the risks and alternatives. This video is intended as a tool to help you better understand the procedure that you are scheduled to have or are considering. It is not intended to replace any discussion, decision-making, or advice of your surgeon.